that some plumb with this line up here, so that theoretically when you got your wall all the way built, you can plumb this way. See what she's doing there? That's basically all just to tie the string onto. And you can offset the string. Sometimes like if you're actually laying a masonry wall, you want the string almost right on it, so you line up to it. Sometimes you want to set off anywhere from 2 to 12 inches. So you just measure back and forth so the string's not in your way. But you want the string caught. And once the string is up, um, it's kind of sacrosanct. Nobody touches it. Because if it moves, it messes up the front of your wall. We got some. Yeah, I see the bubbles. I see the bubbles are getting out of there. Hey, James. Yeah. I think I, you know, I looked at the. Okay, so, so what we've got set up now is a water level, really simple, low tech tool. All it is is this clear tubing and two yardsticks, tape, and water. So simple. You can spend a lot of money on a laser level um, or spend a lot of time figuring other things out. Um, and so what you want to do is fill this up, tape it to the yardstick. What we're trying to find is the same elevation as the top of that cross piece so that we can set that elevation over here. We want that to be level with this so that our string line, as it's pulled taut across here, is level. And that's what we'll measure down from or measure up from to get level. So what Jan is doing is holding her, um, her yardstick so the top of her water uh, mark is um, at the top of the batter board. Now, if you, if you want to get real particular, the water itself has a little curve, has the meniscus on it. It doesn't matter what you pick, just pick the same on both sides, okay? The other thing to know about water levels is um, this is the two-person method. You can take a five-gallon bucket, drill a hole, drill a hole in the bottom that's the same diameter as this, push it in, silicone it in, let it dry, the silicone caulk, and then fill this up, set it up on a um, on something a little bit higher, and then you can walk around with that with one person. Okay? And you know what this water level is, um, and you can work with it that way. So that's easy. One other thing to know that can trip you up with water levels is that if you let's say fill this with water and uh, let's say it's been sitting out in the sun and um, it got real warm and you realize, oh gosh, I've got to add a little water to it. If you add cold water to hot water, you're going to get some different, you know, it's going to, you know, as you know, water expands and contracts depending on temperature. When we filled this, we were careful to get the water flowing through so that we ended up with no bubbles. So that you want to flush your bubbles out, you can um, do that a variety of ways. We just put the hose on one end and let it run uh, with a you know strong force so we got all the bubbles. Uh, okay, so Jan doesn't have to stay with the hand to hold that for too much longer. We're going to come over here, and all we have to do, since water is just going to seek its own level, we're going to come here, let it. That's great. So that's, I think, all we need this for. We've got our level here, and um, somebody wants to grab this, and we can dump the water out, take it over there. Someone else can set the top.
top of this next batter board so it meets these two points here. You want this emptied out now, Laura? Yeah. When you go to make a mark that you can really read, instead of doing a straight line, if you do a little carrot, a little V, it's much easier to get to a point. And you know that's the point. If you do a straight line, it can be angled and stuff. The other thing you can do if you've got better boards set up that are going to stay for a little while is you can put a notch in the top of the wood just with a handsaw or something so that you really get it. It's going to stay. So after you guys get a screw in there and get your side straight, then we'll pull it taut from this side. And you don't necessarily have to cut your string. You can just leave it attached there. Um, and then wind it back up there. Okay, great. So now we're ready to go ahead and lay these bags. Um, and know that what we want is six inches away to get to the edge. However, for this bag, it's a little tricky because this bag is going to get wider when we tamp it, right? It's a learning curve. It's not something we're going to get perfect this time, times in a while. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much they're going to spread out. Um, let's say that we're going to at least give ourselves two extra inches, so we're going to set it so that the full bag that's not tamped is eight from the string, and, and take a look. These are going to be so easy to move that we can fiddle with them. If you're working with big bags, you want to practice it, figure out how much they're spreading out, and then uh, stick to that. <laughs>